snuggling with his stick. Okay, buddy. Is it good for you? Okay. Hey, y'all. How's it going? Welcome to the November garden tour. Um, we're actually going to start in the backyard garden today, mostly because <laughs> There's not too much to talk about. Um, if you saw my last garden tour, this backyard garden was established in September of this year, so 2020. So this backyard garden has only really been established for two months. And one of the things I've struggled the most with is um, really just my expectations. <laughs> Um, my expectations of this garden was that it was going to be big and beautiful and lush and um, at the end of the day that's just not what's going to happen when you first establish your garden, especially when you're talking about an in-ground garden. So I've had some success with some things, I've had some massive failures <laughs> with other things, um, but we're going to show you everything. Um, and the other thing that I'll show you is one thing that's really hurting this garden is the amount of sun that it's getting. It's not getting as much sun as I thought it was going to because as the earth moves on its axis through the seasons, the sun moves, even though it's not the sun moving, it's the earth moving, but whatever, science. And, um, the trees are in the way. So we did a little bit of tree trimming right after we moved in, but I think we're gonna have to do some like a, some more intense tree trimming, which we're planning on doing in the next couple of weeks. So really the story of this garden right now is that I am all eyes focused on spring. I'm really focused on what I can do to amend the soil so that we're ready for spring. Um, Cause we got, we got big plans y'all, so. Without further ado, let's show you the backyard garden. Okay, so first, want to show you what's happening in the green stock. This is my this is my success story of the backyard garden. Is this green stock? It's given lots of lettuce and kale. It's doing really really well. Highly recommend getting a green stock if you are looking for small space gardening. This area has changed quite a lot. So I went ahead and mulched, and I know it's kind of like weird sun right now, but the mums are starting to get their second wind. I almost pulled these, but they're starting to bloom again. And then my basil is doing pretty well. Lemon balm, purple salvia, uh, peppermint, and the rosemary does really well here. Rosemary here in Central Texas is actually like used as like like landscaping bushes. I'm so sorry if that is sad for you because rosemary doesn't grow well in your area. It grows great here almost to the point of being like mildly invasive. So this area though is destined for spring tulips, which I will be planting in January. So I'm really happy with how this area is coming along. There's Lana. Hey, lawn dog. Then I went ahead and moved the squash I had growing in the grow bags over here because it got more sun. But this is zucchini and then we have some yellow straight neck squash and Romanesco um, summer squash. I'm not actually sure if those are gonna end up bearing any fruits. They are getting like tiny, tiny little flowers on them. But TBD, we will see on that. And then Lana really loves my garden netting. You know, that's why we have it, right? For the dog's entertainment. And then here is this first bed. So this first bed, we have kale that's doing pretty well. I did have to spray for cabbage moths. I had to spray BT, um, which is an organic pesticide. So I did have to spray for that. And ever since I did that, they're doing a lot better. So the kale is doing well. We have some lettuce that's doing pretty well that we've been eating on. This lettuce is starting to bolt, which means it's gonna flower and put off seed. And then everything else is still pretty small and stunted. This cabbage, there's a chance that I take this cabbage to the community plot because it's just kind of a cool plant, but I don't think it's doing very well because it's really yellowed. So TBD on that. And then these are all mulched garden leaves from our lawn that I just chopped up with the mower and then put in here. 
And then I went ahead and covered up all of the flower seedlings that were in here and I mulched with cedar mulch. The only thing I left in here were these Montauk daisies. These Montauk daisies are um, annuals or perennials, so they'll come back every year, but they just look kind of ugly right now. And then this. So, this is garlic. And it's sprouting. This whole bed is full of garlic. There's probably like 70 plus garlic bulb plants in here. I've never actually grown garlic. Um, and I don't truly know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to follow the directions that the farmer who sold me the garlic told me. He told me to, or I'm sorry, she, she told me to plant it when it got cool in mid-October. That's what I did. I asked her if it was supposed to sprout. She said yes. The sprouts will die back and then it comes back in the spring. I don't know. I have never done this before. So, tiny bit um, nervous to see how that's going to go, but we're rolling with it. She's a farmer. She does this every year. So, we're listening to our farmer. I also did cedar mulch over here. I left some of the larger flower blooms. They're probably not going to create actual flowers, but that's fine lesson learned and then here is the last bed and this bed is almost completely in the shade this bed is almost completely in shade which I'm actually really shocked but like some of these this is butter crunch lettuce and it's actually doing really well in the shade like I could probably harvest that as just a whole head of lettuce and then this remains holding on too but Basically everything else I planted in here is dead. Now the sun issue I was telling you guys about is because of these trees back here. They are not our trees <laughs> in our yard, um, but their branches are just really overgrown into our yard and the sun comes up right about there. And then it comes over and it sets right about there. So, I'm literally getting an extendable saw and I'm going to hand saw all of these trees to the freaking ground. The branches, not the actual trees. The problem is when they built this neighborhood, our neighbor was telling us when they built this neighborhood, they used a type of tree called the Arizona ash um, that has basically like a 30-ish year lifespan. What happens is people don't really understand that they have a lifespan and they don't keep the trees trimmed. So these trees just start growing like craziness and basically falling apart. Um, my boyfriend told me he's never met somebody who complains so much about trees. But trim your trees, guys. Just trim your trees, okay? Just do me a favor. Trim your trees. We are, I'm now going to take you over to my community plot, but before we do that, I wanted to just talk about um, expectations <laughs> uh, for yourself when you're gardening. I came into this garden saying, I'm a great gardener, look at all the success I've had. This is gonna be so easy, I know exactly what I'm doing. Um, I was very humbled. <laughs> by this backyard garden um you know and I think I got my I, I think my ego got knocked down a few notches but I think the biggest takeaway is patience and time um when you're amending soil that has just been grass for 30 plus years that takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of education and it takes a lot of knowing what to do the reason that I put the leaf mulch on my vegetable beds was because it's going to break down over the winter and it's going to provide the ground with a lot of really good stuff that's going to help amend the soil and build that um, microbiome structure of all these microorganisms. Um, there's a, a little bed right out in front of our house that a mad squirrel fight happening over there. There's basically a bed right out in front of our house that's completely covered with trees, it's completely shaded, um, and I was planting some begonias out there just because I had them and I needed to plant them somewhere, and um, I was digging in the dirt, and it's like, I mean, that, 
that much covered in leaves. And um, I, I dug and the amount of earthworms that I found, which like earthworms, if you've got tons of earthworms in your soil, that is a good sign, very good sign. So I had to kind of remind myself that my community plot, which I'm gonna show you now, which I'm very proud of, I've been amending that soil, I've been mulching, I've been doing all that for over a year. Over a year. And it's also got at least six to eight hours of sunlight. Um, so just don't be too hard on yourself, especially when you're a new gardener, um, because it just takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of patience. So with that little sermon out of the way, um, let's go look at the community plot. it going so here we are at my community plot showing you from a little bit of a different angle this time because this this just like sea of brassicas is like my favorite thing ever so the last time we were here um, these were just little baby plants and it's finally cooled off in Texas a little bit we're in zone 8b um, we're kind of on the edge of a and b but I just follow b um, so things are finally starting to cool off a little bit and by cool off I mean 50s 60s and maybe the occasional high 40s <laughs> so it's not really that cool but with the cooler weather these brassicas really really take off um, so that's what's happening in the community plot and also because it's cooled off some of my other things are starting to come back my lavender is getting a little bit of a second wind um, and I have a lot of flowers to show you guys too. So, let me show you around. Okay, so starting at this front corner, this is the lavender. The lavender is starting to come back a little bit, um, but this is just what happens in the summer. I let it die. I don't prune it or anything. I just let it kind of come back. And then if we move this way, we have some deeps. These are bull's blood beets. Um, I don't think they're really quite ready to be pulled yet. I might have planted them too close together, um, but I really do love this like purple foliage that they've got going on. These look like they might kind of be starting to bulb, maybe. And then we have some rogue Brussels sprout plants right here. These might be too closely planted together because they're not quite as big as the other Brussels sprouts, but if we look closely, those are little baby Brussels sprouts. And then I also finished filling in all of this with dirt. These didn't have dirt. And I planted just some, just some annual flowers that were just gonna be pretty. And then this, oof. Okay, so a lot of this is broccoli. So we have some other beets right here and then I tried to sow some beets in some of these bare spots. But this row right here is actually called Waltham Broccoli, and this seeded the best for me. So if we look really deep down into that plant, <laughs> oh, we can see that there is little broccolis that are gonna start forming here pretty quick. So this first row right here is Waltham Broccoli. I'm gonna wait until that ambulance gets away from me. <laughs> this is a community plot in the city, y'all. In the city. So this first row, this is all Waltham broccoli and it looks pretty crammed, but it's actually not. The plants are actually about a foot apart. And then the row next to it, might be able to see better from over here. The row next to it are, these are all Brussels sprouts. There's another row of Brussels sprouts. And actually, I bet I could show you. This is my biggest Brussels sprout right now. The leaves are just massively huge. So this row right here is Brussels sprouts. This is a row of collard greens. 
So there's a row of collard greens. The plants look a lot smaller because I've been picking off of them. Um, but the collard greens are super tasty. And then this is another row of Waltham broccoli. And then on the end is Calabrese broccoli, which actually grows really, really well um, once it cools off. I think it was when I started it, it was just way too hot. So this is the bed of brassicas and collards. Um, and then also what I did, they haven't popped up yet, but in some of these bare spaces, I actually planted carrots. Um, these, these might be little carrots or they might be weeds, who knows? It's always a toss up with gardening. Um, and then I planted more carrots over here. And then I planted another group of carrots in here. So as I harvest from this broccoli and these plants come out, then the carrots will have the opportunity to grow. So some of these, I'm getting some leaf damage. Um, those are from cabbage moths. I can't see any right now. They are like the tiniest little green worms. For cabbage moths, by the way, I actually spray with BT and that fixes it. Like, like I don't even think it's worth letting it go too long before you just grab the BT and spray everything down. Um, BT has worked really well for me we come back over here um rosemary doing great like always this time of year i love this rosemary it's super flavorful um and then my parsley also does really well this time of year so the parsley is killing it um we have a few more flowers this is the curled parsley this is like the stuff that you use for garnish um i don't really ever use this if i'm being honest but it does pretty good at keeping away the pests and then these beautiful things, these are meteor zinnias from Baker Creek, and they are just amazing. They're so beautiful. Um, I really have enjoyed having these in the garden and the bees really love them. And then just some more flowers. This is some cilantro. Oops, apparently I spilled a cilantro right there. <laughs> that is a little baby cilantro, oopsie. Um, so I have cilantro here. I thought this mint was gonna come back, but it's not. More cilantro, more cilantro. Cilantro actually grows best in the cooler weather. And it's funny because I feel like everybody thinks of cilantro as like this summer thing, which it is because you know, you're eating it with like fresh salsa and you're eating cilantro on a lot of like fresh dishes. Um, Cilantro does not grow well in the heat. Cilantro in the heat will either just not grow or it'll immediately bolt and flower um, and then it tastes bad. So cilantro grows really well here in like the fall and the spring. Got some more flowers, more cilantro. Um, this is some thyme that is coming back slowly. I'm not sure how it's doing. Here's more parsley. We have more flowers. I thought these were just really pretty. And then this is peppermint that's kind of coming back a little bit. Um, more flowers, more mint that's coming back. And then this has been glorious. Look at just this happy row of flowers. The pollinators just love these guys. So definitely really happy with that. I do think I'm getting a little bit of like that's either spider mite damage or powdery mildew. Not really sure. This right here, this is actually a mustard green plant, which that needs to be picked, that's huge. So that's a mustard green leaf that's massive. And this mustard green plant actually seeded itself from a mustard green row that I grew last year and it kind of just popped up and I don't really like mustard greens but I'm letting the bugs have at it. So the bugs have something to eat. I'm not just murdering all of them. It's all fine. So these are canary yellow zinnias from Baker Creek. These are really really amazing but they definitely all have this like whatever that splotchiness is so that's fine and then i have some yellow marigolds but then just more of these beautiful yellow flowers and then this is my cinnamon basil i've left this here because the bees just really love it and they really have at it so leaving that there my little oregano patch 
has gotten huge. So I'm not really sure what to do about that. It kind of just keeps climbing everywhere. I'm probably gonna have to cut it back at some point. And then some more uh, orange marigolds that self-seeded. And then this is calendula. It's like kind of dying and I'm not sure why. Um, but it's putting out some really nice flowers, so that's good. And then my thyme is coming back, that's lemon thyme. More flowers, more flowers, sage. The sage is looking really beautiful right now. And yeah, so that's what's going on around the borders. And then on the inside, um, I went ahead and just, this whole space was empty because this is where my radishes were. Um, so I went ahead and just bought some starts from Home Depot. Um, so this is all Swiss chard and I, I tried to grow Swiss chard last year and I just realized I, I don't really love it and so I kind of gave up on growing it. But I'm not really sure that that's like the right thing. <laughs> I think I really wanna like learn how to enjoy Swiss chard because I think it's really good for you. So that's what's happening with Swiss chard and then these uh, six plants are all red cabbage. So these are red cabbage that I'm hoping will just grow really well um, in this spot. And then over here we have like all the carrots and all that stuff. Now this, this right here, let's talk about this. Okay y'all, so this behind me is my field of, my tiny field of bush beans. So these gave off a ton of beans um, but bush beans definitely have a, a fairly determined like lifespan. Like they're not like tomatoes that you can just grow and grow and grow and they'll just keep and keep and keep producing. Um, so what I'm doing though is I'm actually letting these beans dry out on the plant and I can actually save them for seed. I have about a gallon bag in my freezer of frozen green beans from these which is more than enough to feed myself and my, my boyfriend um, for like a lot of meals. The other thing that beans will do as they die is they will actually be really good nitrogen for the soil. So with all of these beans, I'm basically done touching these. I'm just gonna let them die. I'm going to let them create seeds. I'm going to save the seeds so that I can do this again in the spring. So just to show you, because I won't be able to really get viable seeds out of this because it has a little bit of a, has a little bit of damage. Um, but this is how like big and chunky you want these beans to get to save them for seed. So you literally just want to leave them on the plant, let them get big, and then go ahead and let them completely dry. So I will probably show you guys this in another garden tour but like you wouldn't want to eat this at this point this is just like really tough and fibrous and here's so that is your seed oh no I lost it so that right there this right here that's your seed so once that actually dries, that's what you're gonna replant. And that's how I got the first couple of rows of beets, as I saved seeds from the spring. So you wanna let these dry and get really chunky, and then you'll save the seeds like that. So that is what's happening with all of these beans. I am actually uh, not going to be in town for most of December. Um, so I'm having somebody else take care of my plot for me. Um, but one of the things you have to think about when you're leaving your garden for any kind of time is what you need to do to cover the ground. So I'm trying to figure out a few things, what I can do, what I can plant before I'm gone because December in zone 8B is still really warm, so things are still gonna grow whether you plant them or not, which means you either have to plant a cover crop, plant something, or, or let the weeds take over, basically. So I'm gonna let all of these beans die um, probably for the next, I would say three weeks, right up until we're going to be gone. Um, and then I'll probably pull them, chop them up, save as many seeds as I can, um, 
turn them into the soil so that they can provide the nitrogen and then I'm gonna have to figure out some kind of cover crop to plant um, I have no idea what that's gonna be yet. <laughs> oh but we're gonna figure it out I it's been such a stressful year that like these are the things I haven't put any thought into yet so that's what's happening at the community plot overall I'm really really happy with how my fall gardening went um, last year was my first year gardening ever and my fall garden was it was great and it taught me a lot about gardening but I wouldn't say that it was overly productive I didn't really feel like I didn't really feel like we got a lot out of the garden last year um, because honestly when I got my plot we cleared it out and I planted some stuff but there were these like massive collard green like trees all superimpose a photo here if I can but these collard green trees were taking up so much space and I didn't have the heart to rip those out until January or February right before we put in the spring garden um, but once I did rip them out I realized how much room that they were taking up so for basically like my first solid fall garden I'm feeling real good about this um this is kind of this is my garden that i'm proud of <laughs> all right y'all thanks so much for hanging out with me at the gardens all of my gardens today um i since i won't be here in december i won't really be able to show you what the gardens look like um so we'll be back in january and at that point we're all eyes on spring we're gonna talk about amending the soil we're gonna talk about mulching we're gonna talk about everything that i'm gonna be doing to get ready for spring growing because spring growing in zone 8b here in texas actually starts in march um, because that's when it gets warm enough to do that um, so also in january i'm gonna be starting a lot of seeds um, which you know i'll take you through that whole process as well but it's been a fun year i really appreciate your time and attention uh, to my gardens in 2020 um, Thank you so much. I really appreciate each and every one of you that's watching. And uh, yeah, happy 2020. I will, you will see this garden again in 2021. Thanks y'all. I hope you have a really great day. Hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you wanna see more. And we will catch you next time. Happy gardening.